Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Because of my work schedule right now I don't have a whole lot of time to do something big but the stream that we had last weekend we were launching from the surface of the MUN while we were testing out the the moon SSTO. You know what? Fuck it, I'm just gonna call it Moon. While we, were, while we were testing out the Moon SSTO, an SSTO that did not use nuclear engines, but rather just rapiers and some others, spikes and stuff, to launch 50 Kerbals from the surface of Kerbin to the Moon and back. Kinda like a Moon Airlines thing. Airlines? Well, air, no, not, no air. Space line, yeah. I mean, actual, in, in actuality, a space line would go to a destination, refuel, and then come back. But in order to prove its ability, I wanted it to do it all in one shot without refueling. If I was to use nuclear engines, of course, this would be way more fuel efficient, but I like to give myself a challenge. A lot of people, when it comes to SSTOs, especially interplanetary ones, including myself, a lot of people, use nuclear technology as kind of a crutch. Because in this game, it is the best when it comes to interplanetary engines for large spacecraft. Now some of you would argue that the ion engine is the best, and while ISP wise it is, thrust wise it sucks, and you need a whole lot of power in order just to get started. So that ion engine is great for small spacecraft, very light tiny spacecraft. When you're talking about large, huge, big, heavy ones, well, unless you feel like sitting there for a couple of years making one maneuver, it might not be the best decision you've ever made. Unless of course you use the Cal 1000 and bug your way over there to another planet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a video that I made a while back explaining Kraken drives and how you can use the Cal 1000 to make the ion engine a super engine. But anyway, the hell was I talking about? Leaving the moon. Yes, leaving the moon. Um, fuel-wise, what is the best way to leave the moon? Now, for some of you older players, you're like, Oh, I know, I know, to the, the best way, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we understand. However, for the newer players out there, or even players that really haven't, or really don't travel to the moon very often, you're about to learn something. <laughs> oh, no, 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 don't run away, don't run away. You're gonna learn, damn it. Get your ass back in. Now, for the sake of argument, I went ahead and I tested these different types of takeoff maneuvers from the moon many different times in order to see which one was the best and most efficient takeoff method. This whole thing actually started in the stream again from the weekend when some people were telling me to take off this way, take off that way, it's better to go in orbit first before taking off, this, this, that, and the other thing. So I decided to test all of the options. Some people said when you take off, point towards Kerbin and fly towards Kerbin. I did that on multiple different surface areas. I did that on one side of the moon, on the left side, on the right side, on the top side. Interestingly enough, pointing towards Kerbin Kerbin doesn't work for me, or didn't at least. I'd get some strange orbital mechanic thing going on, which would actually make me never touch Kerbin, but instead launch myself into interplanetary space. I guess if you look at the moon in one in, in, in a certain direction, if the moon is spinning around Kerbin counterclockwise, then I've launched aiming at the planet Kerbin, like some people said. I've launched from its prograde, from the moon's prograde, going around Kerbin. I've launched from the moon's retrograde, going from going around Kerbin. I've launched from the surface of the Mun where the planet Kerbin is directly above you. I knew that wasn't going to work, but I wanted to go ahead and test it anyway. So I launched straight for Kerbin. No joy, as predicted. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and get into orbit first, then go to Kerbin and find the best orbital takeoff solution. Interestingly enough, in some cases, this is a pretty good standard way to get off of Kerbin. I mean, Kerbin. Blah, 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 blah. Pretty good standard way to get off of the moon and go to Kerbin. It's only slightly better than what I was doing this weekend with the moon SSTO, which was launching from the moon's retrograde, essentially slowing myself down so that I fall back towards Kerbin, which is a very fuel efficient way of doing things. However, in comparison to going into orbit and then leaving the moon, you actually save a little bit more fuel by going into orbit first. Just a little bit. I'm talking like 10 meters per second. The difference is minute. So if you're not too used to or you don't really know the best way of how to get into orbit as fuel efficient as possible around the moon or mun and then from that orbit transition over into Kerbin then an easier way slightly less efficient I mean slightly like like super slightly like 10 15 meters per second wow what a difference <gasps> somebody, somebody call, call the space, space police. police if you want just a simpler way then simply launch retrograde from the moon land somewhere and it's in its retrograde spot that's the spot that's basically the back end of the moon 
while it's spinning around Kerbin, and then launch just straight up from there. You'll pretty much get the same fuel efficiency leaving the moon that way. Why? Doesn't the gravity pull you back down? Gravity on the moon is a joke. Yeah, it does pull you, but it's like, like I said, the difference between getting into orbit and then leaving the moon compared to leaving the moon straight out from the retrograde side of the moon is like 15 meters per second less delta V. Unless you're going for the world record, it's not going to hurt you that much. However, if you're sufficient and, and you're really good at getting into a very efficient moon orbit, then go ahead and do that. I don't care. Shit. However, guess what? I found a better way. <laughs> I thought to myself that if you got into the moon orbit and then once you reached around, I'd say if you're if you're to look on top of the moon and look at it like a clock, 12 o'clock being pointed straight to Kerbin, or not 12, blah, 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 1 o'clock being pointed straight to Kerbin. Wait, no. 12. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with me? Then you have the 1 and the 2 and the 3, and the 3 would be like prograde, the direction of the moon going around Kerbin. 4, 5, 6 being pointed out towards space. 7, 8, 9. 9 would be retrograde. 10, 11, and 12 would be pointed towards Kerbin. Then when you're in orbit around the moon, you want to make your orbital maneuver to leave the moon around the 2 o'clock. At this angle, you save a whole lot of money. Money? What? Save a whole lot of fuel swinging out to the surface of Kerbin. But what I propose is that instead of wasting fuel getting into orbit to begin with around the moon, because of the fact that once you burn up to a certain apoapsis, you have to turn the engine off and coast up to that apoapsis before you can make a orbital insertion burn. So during that coast phase, you're going to lose speed, which in this case translates over to delta V. So instead of doing that, why not make one continuous burn, saving delta V in the process headed to Kerbin? In other words, if you're going to land anywhere on the moon, land at that two o'clock spot or thereabout. And then when you're ready to leave Kerbin, launch from the surface of the moon, but not vertically, but rather horizontally, skimming the surface as best you can without running into anything. Of course, don't, don't run into anything. That'd be bad. But instead, skim the surface of the moon. Keep burning until you see the orbital trajectory showing you that you're going to slam into Kerbin's surface. Not, not slam. You, you know what I mean by that. Enter the Earth. Earth? What? The Kerbin's atmosphere ever so gently. But yeah, check that out. The best way to leave the moon that I have found is to launch directly from its two o'clock area on the surface of the moon and launch directly to Kerbin. One go, one shot. Don't get into orbit. Don't waste your fuel. One burn, you're done. Don't point to Kerbin. That's a really bad thing to do. I'm not sure how it's working for those who do point to Kerbin and somehow make it. In my tests, it never worked. But yeah, just point straight to... Gosh damn it, I just told you not to. Just skim along the surface of the moon. Keep burning as hard as you can. And once you know that you're in... Once you know you're not going to run into anything, zoom out to map mode. Watch your orbit as it goes into Kerbin's atmosphere. And then boom, you're done. Amazingly, compared to every other Kerbin... Well... A court blah, 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 blah. Amazingly, getting into orbit and then making that maneuver going to Kerbin, in comparison to just launching directly to Kerbin from this angle, you'll actually save anywhere between 30 to 40 meters per second. Delta V. That tells me that the coasting phase actually sucks up about that much if you're to coast into orbit first and then make the maneuver. And in some cases, that's a lot of Delta V. So yeah, there you go. If ever you go to the moon, land in the two o'clock position or area or surface area or blah, 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 whatever. You know what I'm talking about. That spot right there. And then when you're ready to take off, just do how I told you to do it. And boom, that's like the most efficient way to get off the moon. So if you already knew this, then good for you. You old KSP player, you. You freaking legend, you. You're just such a naughty little legend. Yes, you are. But if you didn't know about this and you learned something new, then I have done my job here. This has been a Kerbal Space Program video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm actually likes me. It's very picky that way. I don't know what its problem is. It needs to chill. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program. Hopefully one of these days I'll find a new game. Maybe Kerbal Space Program 2. They're talking about early 2023 now. But, you know, there's plenty of other games out there that's fun and spacey. Also, I have a membership if you're interested. Signing up for the membership gives you little emojis and stuff. It's pretty cool. Little badges next to your name. Dragon Skull. But yeah, that's it for today. Again, thank you so much for watching this Kerbal Space Program video. Love you all, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.